In this build, I'm going to show you how I built this wine box. It has a tambour front cover. It measures 14 inches tall, 5 inches wide, and 6.5 and inches deep. Let's get on with the build. The inspiration for this build came from the August-September 2018 edition of Woodsmith. It's their shop project, Tambor Chisel Case. I started with four-quarter ash and resawed it for the sides and the ends. The box members are three-eighths of an inch thick. I took these pieces over the thickness planer to clean up both faces and get them down to three-eighths of an inch thick. Next, I built a template to guide the router so that I could put the groove in for the tambour cover. The template is made from quarter inch MDF. To give you a better idea what I'm trying to accomplish, here are some sketches from my sketchbook. I caution you that the dimensions here should be mere suggestions. For instance, this picture here does not even show the groove for the true bottom of the case. Whereas in this sketch, you can see where I did add the groove for the true bottom. The radius for the groove for the tambour cover was 1 and 1 16th inch. To be honest with you, I just copied that out of the plans for the uh, chisel box. Once I played around with the dimensions and felt comfortable with them, I went about cutting up the stock for the sides and the ends. The depth of the sides is 6 and a half inches. Then it was as simple as cutting the ends and the sides. The box turned out to be 14 inches long, 5 inches wide, and 6 and a half inches deep. And I was always trying to maintain grain alignment. However, I don't think I turned out as well as I would have liked to at the end. The first groove I cut was for the tambour cover. I used a quarter inch bit for all the grooves and tried to get about a quarter inch deep. Here I am sticking the template down with double back tape. Here's a tip I picked up from George Vandriska about marking your start and stop points on the template for your router. I cut the rest of the grooves at the router table. After all the grooves were cut, I used the router table with the chamfer bit to cut 45 degree angles on the corners of the box pieces. If I had to do it over again, I'd use dovetail construction joints. There was some minor cleanup required after I chamfered the ends. Cutting the bottoms was simply a matter of measuring and trimming the stock. The stock I planed down to slightly less than a quarter of an inch to make sure I had an easy fit. Building the tambour cover is really a pretty simple project. I've got a jig here that's based on a uh, solid piece of MDF. I've got a permanent board at the top to push all the splines up against. Each side ends up being uh, somewhat of a rabbited configuration. In this case, uh, the bottom piece here is from the same material as the splines. I put a couple pieces of tape on it to give me a little bit of freedom. You slide the splines in up against the top board, bring this board in, tighten it up, and then down at the bottom, you bring in another backer board with two tapered pieces so that you can wedge that up against the splines and seal off all of these joints so that when you put the glue on, and then the canvas on top of it, you won't get any seepage. Each of the timbre splines is a quarter inch square by four and a half inches long. I had cut these at the table saw. I ended up putting some tape over the guard so that I wouldn't lose the pieces while I was cutting them. I put a quick coat of wax over everything just to make sure. I opted in this build that the timber splines would be the finished width. In a previous one of my videos, the appliance garage, I show how you can cut the timber 
to size after you've assembled it and even put rabbets on each edge. Here's the wedge configuration I talked about earlier. After securing the splines and the jig, I put some tape along the edges about a quarter of an inch in to keep the uh, glue from working its way in underneath the uh, side supports and then across the top and the bottom. Smearing uh, just enough glue on and then applying the canvas and then you just sit and let it uh, rest overnight. This is always the exciting part and makes woodworking worthwhile. I had to do just a minor bit of fine tuning to make sure I had a nice smooth easy glide. I purposely made the cover long and I'm checking it out here. It looks like I'm going to cut off about 12 of the splines. I put some cradles in the box to support the bottle. Here I'm putting in the supports for the cradle. Cutting the cradles at the drill press and then taking the pieces over to the table saw and separating them into the two halves. I decided to put a handle on the top of the box. Here I'm at the drill press starting to fabricate the handle. Now over to the band saw for a little more trimming. A little hand work and the next thing you know you've got a handle. I tried many methods of clamping during dry fit up. And to be honest with you, I came to the conclusion that just using the blue painter's tape on each corner was the fastest, easiest, and most efficient method. I was using the straight edge on my level to line up the pieces while I applied the tape. As you can see, it was quite a puzzle putting everything together and making sure all the grooves lined up. I made many test fits before I put the glue on. One final piece that I added was a stop at the top of the box for the tambour cover. Here I am at the bandsaw cutting it out and then a matter of just clamping it on at the end. After assembly, I put two coats of BioShield Hard Oil Number no. 9 on. You might have noticed during assembly that the tambour cover was pre-finished and you were correct. I did this so that I'd make sure that I could get the oil between the splines. That's all folks. I hope you enjoyed the video and remember, happy woodworking.